Fortnite has become one of the biggest games out at the moment. It kind of helps that it's free to play and you yourself can go and download it and play it or stream it right now and it makes it one of the most popular games to stream. If you're thinking about streaming it or if you're just thinking about playing it but you're not too sure if your system can handle it or what processor you should be aiming for if you do want the best stream quality or even just the best gaming experience then this video should help you. Now of course you can play Fortnite on almost anything. It is pretty scalable especially on lower settings but if you want to stick it on those epic settings even running at 1080p here are kind of the, the main chips that I'm going to be looking at and testing in this video. So first things first we've got the Ryzen 2700X we've also got the 2600X an Intel 8700K and the 8600 non-K. Now I'd love to have tested the 8600K here but I just don't have that available so the 8600 non-K will have to do. Now bearing in mind the pricing for these chips the 2700X is a 320 pound chip has a 3.7 gigahertz uh, base clock with a 4.35 gigahertz boost and is an 8 core 16 thread chip. The 2700X is a 210 pound chip is a 6 core 12 thread chip with 3.6 gigahertz base and 4.25 gigahertz boost. The 8700K has the same number of cores sells for about 330 pounds though and has a 3.7 gigahertz base and 4.7 gigahertz boost. And finally the 8600 non-K is a locked processor so unlike all of the other processors assuming you have a compatible motherboard you're going to be able to overclock all of those and get extra performance out of them whereas for this one you can't. This is selling for £195 has a 3.1 gigahertz uh, base clock and a 4.3 gigahertz boost and is also six cores although only six threads. And just to give you an idea in terms of testing I was running obviously Fortnite on epic settings at 1080p. Uh, I was also running in terms of the streaming numbers uh, having uh, x.264 encoder running at 6000 megabits per second on the very fast preset and also doing a separate indistinguishable quality recording with OBS to the local drive which is kind of a, a stress test for the chips. Um, I also mention that uh, I don't mention I'm, I'm, I'm not kind of covering the stream quality here because the output files and the actual stream qualities all didn't drop any frames they're all nice and smooth and there wasn't any co uh, noticeable quality difference between any of the four streams. So taking a look at the performance results you can see on the averages that the 2700X was the fastest with the 8700K second although in streaming results they were all identical except for the 8700K which was kind of the biggest loser in both averages and the minimums as you can see here. The 8600 was actually the most impressive chip all around in terms of its losses and the maximums were all pretty similar and didn't lose too much which is always nice to see so I wouldn't worry too much about that. So as you saw the 2700X was the fastest although the A700K was very close behind. Now this is uh, as the, the results come so for everyone who's going to mention that these results are completely wrong in the comments this is as far as I can tell as accurate as I can get them. These are multiple mi like five minute benchmarks multiple of them averaged out so it's as close as I can get it to a, a completely fair test here so just bear that one in mind but I would mention that either of these two chips are fantastic purchases. I would mention the that if you are planning on say editing the streamed clips afterwards the 2700X might have a little bit of an edge just because of those extra cores and extra processing power. Now the surprise here was actually the 8600 while it was the slowest chip overall in the non-streaming benchmark when streaming it lost the least and kept the, the same numbers as the 2600 and the 2700X's and was only marginally faster than the 8700K so it's pretty impressive to see that it makes it a pretty decent value for money although the 2700X I would say is a little bit better value for money because you get a little bit better raw performance and you also pay a very similar amount but get those extra threads as well and extra clock speed which could be very useful. Although as I mentioned in the video a couple of weeks ago with X.264 versus NVE and C you can still stream with your GPU with no problems and personally I don't notice too much of a difference so feel free to take a look at that video if you're interested and you do already have a system but it's not performing performing all that well with X264 uh, encoding with streaming. So that's pretty much it. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Which chip is for you and which graphics card would you pair that chip with to get the best gaming experience? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Otherwise you can support the channel by taking a look at the links in the description down below. There's a Patreon link where you can support me directly or there's Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links so if you click on those links before you purchase from those places it massively helps me out and I thank anyone who does use them.
use them. You can also check out the other videos over here for you. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And otherwise, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and we'll see you all in the next video.